In the first example of the network analysis, I would like to apply the node voltage analysis to this circuit. It might feel convenient to use the mesh current analysis here, as we are dealing with voltage sources in the first place, but I'm actually using the node voltage analysis here, mainly for the sake of training. The first thing you have to do is to actually transfer the voltage sources into current sources. And that can be done with Norton and using the inner impedances of the voltage sources. Therefore, the voltage source VA gets converted into a current source IA with its inner impedance set 1, and VB is converted into the current source IB with its inner impedance set 5. That concludes step 1, because now the circuit only consists of current sources, and we used Norton to actually transfer the voltage sources. So moving on to step two, we need to define a reference node that we typically call ground. And that is done by putting the symbol ground down here on one of the nodes. You could have chosen any arbitrary other node, but for human thinking, it is usually good to use one of the nodes that have the lowest potential in the circuit. Now the third step, is using Kirchhoff's current law on all the remaining nodes. And the remaining nodes in this case is the node A here and the node B, which I have named this way now. And I have also defined the voltages from the node A with respect to ground and from the node B with respect to ground. The currents flowing into node A are the source currents connected to it which is only the current source IA. And for the same, for the B node, we only have the current from the current source IB flowing into the node. The currents flowing out of the node, we will define as the admittance times the voltage across it. So here we have the admittance of Z1, so that is Y1, times the voltage VA, which is across that admittance, as one of the currents flowing out, the other current flowing out of the node is Y2 times VA, and the third current flowing out of the node is VA minus VB times Y3, the admittance of that impedance 3 up here. And the same way for the node B, we have the currents flowing out of that, which is here the voltage VB across the admittance Y5, the voltage VB across the admittance Y4, and the voltage VB minus VA times the admittance Y3, also flowing out of that node. So summing up Kirchhoff's current law for each of the nodes, the node A here, we have all the source currents flowing into that node on the right-hand side of the equation and the admittances times the respective voltages flowing out of the node on the left-hand side of the equation and the same thing for the node B. In the fourth step, we rewrite these equations in the matrix form down here where our source vector ends up on the right hand side of the equation, the voltages that we want to solve for with Kramer's rule end up down here, and the admittance matrix is the one here, which we used in the general form as the A matrix. Finally, to solve for the unknown voltages VA, we have the determinant of the admittance matrix in the denominator and we replace the first column with the source vector in the admittance matrix to solve for the first variable, which is VA in that case. And we do the same thing for solving for VB, replacing the second column of the admittance matrix 
which then with the determinant operation gives us VB. Now, solving the determinants is simply multiplying from the upper left corner to the lower right corner and subtracting the opposite direction, which leaves us with the denominator here. And doing the same thing for the numerator, multiplying the y1 plus y2 plus y3 with y3 plus y4 plus y5, and then subtracting minus y3 and minus y3 means that we are left with the multiplication of all of those admittances and the y3 cancels out. For reducing the amount of writing I have to do with the indexes here, I'm redefining the admittance here with the alpha and beta, y alpha beta to be the multiplication of y alpha times y beta. Finally, we have the result for VA in this line and the result for VB in that line. And we can use those voltages now using also Ohm's law to derive all the currents through the components and the circuit is calculated. No later than this point, you would typically use a computer to help you solve for the numerical values.